We will be presenting Soft Bubble Grippers in Visio Tactile Policy Learning, a Robotics Master's Capstone project done by me, Miles Creevy, and Aaron Fernandez over the spring and fall 2023 semesters at the Minnesota Robotics Institute. Hi, my name is Miles Creevy. I'm a second year master's student in the robotics program here at the University of Minnesota. I'm a member of the Robotics Perception and Manipulation Lab, and my research focus is deep learning for tactile perception and manipulation. Hi, I'm Aaron Fernandez, and I am a second year master's student at the Robotics Institute at Minnesota, and I'm a member of the Robotic Perception and Manipulation Lab. We will be presenting our redesign and fabrication process for the soft bubble grippers, our algorithmic based approaches to pose estimation and shear estimation, our novel task formulation, the rotate bottle task, our data generation process on our custom teleoperation setup our training process for diffusion policy, and our evaluation on a real-world UR5 setup. The grippers needed to be redesigned around the RealSense D405 camera. The first iteration consisted of the camera mount, which was also connected to the Robotic grippers. It had a smaller form factor that did not capture the point clouds accurately. The second iteration moved the distance from the camera to the latex from 3 cm to 7 cm, which gave a much denser point cloud. Another feature of the second iteration was the adjustable closing dimension, which was changed by moving the body along the mount to the gripper. Here we show the fabrication process for the soft bubble grippers. We start by painting a stenciled pattern onto the latex membrane to help with depth estimation. We then spray adhesive onto the acrylic window, which is adhered to the latex membrane. We cut the excess latex and glue it into a 3D printed sealing band, which we can pressurize using the attached nozzle, and we can attach it to the other 3D printed components such as the bubble mount, camera mount, and robotique mount. This is the assembled picture of the soft bubble grippers. Here we can see the raw RGB image feed from the RealSense D405 camera inside of the bubble gripper. The pattern painted on the latex membrane enhances the visual features and allows us to capture more precise deformations when manipulating an object. The task we are attempting to accomplish is called the rotate bottle task. This task is to simply rotate a bottle upright and place it on the table. As humans, we successfully perform this task countless times a day with variations in objects, initial configurations, and even with tactile information alone. We seamlessly implement precise in-hand object pose estimation by recognizing the rotation and translation through vision or touch. We recognize when the bottle has made contact with the table and when to release, all without vision. And we use the natural compliancy of our hands to ensure the placement of objects with a wide range of physical properties. How do we teach this task to a robot? This task requires the robot to correctly predict the in-hand rotation of a transparent bottle, relying mostly on the contact patch with the soft bubble. It must then correctly rotate in order to upright the bottle for placement. We use an end-to-end -end learning based approach called diffusion policy to use observations for predicting robot actions. The observations of the robot task include two views from the soft bubble, the left and the right, the wrist view, the side view, as well as the 60 end effector pose in the gripper state. The rotate bottle task starts with a stable grip of a random rotation of the bottle in the soft bubble grippers. The demonstrator's goal is to place the bottle onto the table, registering deformation in the soft bubbles at the time of placement to ensure contact rich interaction. We recorded 50 demonstrations, 25 each between two expert demonstrators on the custom teleoperation setup pictured. We initialize our bottle rotations from 15 to 90 degrees in the soft bubble grippers and randomize the end effector pose. Here we show the diffusion policy framework. The input is an image observation sequence that contains the two visio tactile images from both of the bubbles, the wrist camera view and the side camera view, as well as the robot pose which contains the 60 end effector pose in gripper state. These are input to the CNN-based diffusion policy from the original work that contains film conditioning and a 1D unit to learn the gradient of the action distribution through K iterations of denoising, where we start with a Gaussian distribution of actions at AK and iterate K times to obtain the original trajectory from the training data. 
Here we show qualitative results of successful rollouts of the train diffusion policy on the rotate bottle task. We examine the policy's ability to learn the data distribution and accomplish the task at various initial bottle rotations, including 45, 90, and 15 degrees. Here we show qualitative results of failed rollouts of the train diffusion policy on the rotate bottle task with the same initial bottle rotations. We note that these failure cases occurred due to lack of generalization of certain models, inherent difficulty of placing an empty bottle that can become unbalanced, and initializations that are nearly out of distribution. Over the course of this project, we have explored how task design, hardware design of Visio tactile sensors, observation types, data quantity, and data distribution all impact performance for learning robotic tasks through diffusion policy. This exploration has led us closer to addressing the question of how can Visio tactile sensing help robots learn grasping and manipulation tasks. I would finally like to thank the committee, as well as my other collaborators in the RPM lab and Minri for providing physical spaces and funding for this project. Thank you.